steps of my king. Hello, everyone. I hope you're ready for this uh, controversial topic, but it is an important topic. And it's going to be on, um, I'm going to talk briefly about women as co-pastors. Uh, I've already did a podcast on women pastors and what's going on um, with that. And, you know, now the big thing is co-pastors. You know, what, what does the Bible say? You know, Shane, what do you say? I've get emails quite often to do a podcast on this, even though I've done one before. So you can probably search for it and find it. Um, and I'll just sum that one up briefly. What happens is, and here's why this is, is an issue. Um, and I've talked to pastors, you know, Foursquare, Vineyard Movement, um, that, you know, have women pastors, and then even uh, other denominations. Um, and I've talked to, you know, those who are conservative and others. And of course, it doesn't matter who you talk to, what does the Bible say? But here's what's going on. So throughout history, even biblical history, Christian history, women have been treated like second-class citizens, uh, not even able to vote uh, the Bible. Really, Jesus really elevated women for sure. And so um, the Bible's clear too that women are equal, completely equal. That's why we are called complementarian. Uh, it's, 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 it's interesting though, the word equal, there's a word egalitarian, but we're not egalitarian because that would mean equal in all facets of how God designed us. So we are complementarian, complementarians meaning we are all equal before God, our value, our worth, dignity, respect. We're, we're all one in Christ Jesus, but there's different roles that God gives us based on how we were designed. So we complement each other. And that's, that's the difference. Uh, and then the egalitarian would be believe that women could be pastors. So I'm hoping this will help a little bit. Um, and, and again, my podcast, I think I go in this detail. Actually, if you go to shaneidleman.com and put in women pastors in the search bar. I wrote a whole article on this and broke down the scriptures and different things. So in a nutshell, um, if you look at you know the qualifications of an elder, uh, the qualifications are for a man. If you look at you know Jesus's, who Jesus called uh, the men, and it's not because they're better. And see, that's the thing. Our culture makes, oh, men are superior, they're dominating. Uh, not at all. It's just a different calling. It, it's it's to lead and to protect versus men have these characteristics, women have these characteristics. So I don't see anything in the Bible where um, a, a woman is to be a pastor of a church. And Paul even says, do not usurp the authority over the man. Now, the scriptures on a woman being silent, you know, that would that would take, that's a whole nother podcast on the context of that. You know, they're dealing with pr prophecy and, and obviously, obviously, and I can prove this with scripture, I believe, we don't believe that a woman should be silent in church and never say anything. I mean, uh, women are prophetesses. Uh, this, your sons and your daughter will prophesy. Well, to prophesy, you got to speak to people and uh, powerful prayer warriors and uh, even leading meetings or leading certain ministries. And so we see women operating in all different capacities. Um but here's where here's why there's a difference. Um, I would say, let me just first unpack this word pastor. Um, I've got it. I think I can put it up here for you from the Strong's Exhaustive, it's Bible Hub, Strong's Exhaustive Concordance. And you'll see down here where it is uh, poimain, poimain. That's the word for a pastor, poimain. It's a shepherd. And a shepherd what? Perfect, protects the flock. Uh, the feeder, the protector, and the ruler of a flock of men. So, and it goes down here to say, someone who the Lord raises up to care for the total well-being of his flock. So, that's why there is <clears throat> the, the, the big difference here and why some of us are adamant about, hey, that God has called men to, to lead and protect. But what they would say is uh, that, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't see women as leading men, you know, circumventing the authority of the man. They're, they're actually under the covering still of their hat. So let's talk about co-pastors. They're still under the covering of their husband, but they are, we're acknowledging their leadership role in the church. 
we acknowledge that. So we call, you know, pastor, co-pastor, woman pastor of this and, or whatever. Um, and, and then there, of course there's other broader examples of where women are actually the senior pastor of their church. And I think that is, uh, definitely out of order. I mean, there's no biblical support for that. Uh, and you might say, well, God is still moving. Yeah, he, he absolutely will. And he does. God takes broken, fractured vessels. Just because something is, is out of order doesn't mean God is not going to uh, provide some fruit. Think about how many families are out of order. Let's say the women's leading because the man is just doesn't, he's lazy spiritually. Well, does that mean God's doing this? Nope, no blessings for you. Nope, sorry, you're going to be just you're not going to have God's best, that's for sure. And there's going to be some some de deficiencies and things. But God still blesses and brings fruit, even when things are out of order sometimes. There's disorder. In the midst of disorder, God will bring order. They're not receiving the full benefit of God's blessing. Um, and I believe, you know, you could say, is that is that person sinning? Uh, it depends, again, what they think the Bible teaches. But if a woman is usurping the authority of the man and leading the man, the men spiritually, I mean, there's just, there's absolutely no biblical grounds for that. And so what happens too with, let's say a co-pastor, you know, the man and rightly so, you know, I've got my wife and we want, we want, and we, we acknowledge to people that we founded this church together. Um, she leads the women's ministry and, and, but we avoid the word pastor because in the biblical context, um, you, sh you shouldn't use that word, uh, pastor, overseer, elder, um, it, it, you're, it, it's, it's confusing and it gives people mixed signals uh, and it's not biblically accurate. Um, I, and I think, well, there's a couple things going on here. I could take a lot of rabbit trails. So in the case of like my wife and lots of other wives, they, they don't even want that title. They don't, they don't believe in that title either. Um, they want the man to lead the man to protect. It's a servant leadership, but I think um, some women though, and again, I'm just speaking the truth. Some women, um, don't want, they, they, they want, there's a, um, there's a desire. You can look at Genesis. There's a desire to usurp the authority of a man. There's a desire. I want to be equal. I want to this. I want that. And they want to be a co-pastor, uh, because of pride. Now, again, not saying everyone, uh, some men just want to honor their wives and some wives are walking humbly in that position. I can think of a few different churches. I've got some friends, um, who their wives are co-pastors, man, powerful, powerful couple, uh, churches on fire, churches do amazing things. But again, they might not be out of order necessarily, but they're using a term that shouldn't be used. Um, you know, you can say, you know, uh, pastor such and such and his wife, you know, uh, co-leaders or co-founders co or whatever. But when you throw the word pastor in there, that's why it gets confusing because a pastor has qualifications that are, are outlined in the Bible and a woman, a woman doesn't meet those qualifications. Not only that, I think you give a mixed, uh, a mixed signal when you have co-pastors. Okay. Who, who's the leader? I mean, who's the head? Like the Bible says, who, who's the head? Well, we, 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 we don't have a head. We have two leaders. And that's, that's out of order. That's not biblical. So somebody has got to lead again, servant leadership, not mean, not domineering. And then the wife again, co-equal complementarian, they complement each other equal before God, but different roles. So the man is the lead pastor and the woman then again, equal, not in terminology though, with, with pastoral calling, she can oversee everything else she already is, as long as it's not usurping the authority over the man. And so my thought is I would, you know, just really encourage pastors to, to think about everything I said, look at the biblical um, definition of a pastor, point main, um, and bishop overseer, episcopal, and, and you can look at all these, these qualifications. We're, we're confusing people. Uh, I don't think we should ever have pastor and woman in the same sentence because it gives the wrong message. And biblically, it doesn't line up. You can, again, look at my article, shaneidleman.com for a lot more on this and search women pastors. But again, we love women in ministry. We, I wish, and if God allowed women, like women leaders over men, I mean, I would be, you know, I mean, Nikki Haley, as I'm recording this, just announced her run for 2024. Do I think 
uh, in let's say for a president, president of the United States. I think again, the ideal because of God's designed, God's design, the ideal is the man to lead, to be the protector, to take the hits, to take the first gunshots. And, and, and so that's why we view it that way. But others say, oh no, president, CEO, it's about hierarchy, hierarchy and power and domination. And, and so that's why the, the view is skewed. The Bible view is servant leadership coming from a broken, humble man who's called to die for his family or die for the nation or, and, and so you do see, but you see incredible women and doing incredible things and, and leading certain areas. Um, and I also think we can gleam a lot from, uh, you know, women in the area of ministry, for example, um, I would highly recommend Nancy de Lamas's Wagamuth. Now, Nancy de Lamas Wagamuth, her book on brokenness, humility, surrender. My goodness, her teachings on that. Wow. But she's not over me. She's not my covering. She's not usurping my authority. And now I answer to her. Uh, or when Johnny Erickson Tata, uh, when she taught, gave her testimony, I think at John MacArthur's church, the, the time I was there many years ago, powerful. I mean, listen to her program, powerful. Uh, Anne Graham Lotz or Kay Arthur. Um, you can gleam a lot from these, these people. And so, see, that's the thing. Can a woman preach in a church? Well, what do you mean by preach? I mean, she's opening up the word of God and she's usurping the authority of the men and she's teaching the men and the men have to sit underneath her spiritual accountability, then I think that would be out of order. But she's coming to, to share her testimony or share, I mean, she can share the word of God, how it's transformed her life, maybe tips for parenting for the moms. And, you know, I think I, I want to be careful because I think we, uh, we can put everything under a magnifying glass. And I don't know about that, but you can do that. Just give your testimony, but don't, don't quote a scripture. I mean, that's ridiculous. Um, and I would say maybe there, maybe a, a teaching with her testimony or things would be okay because she's not ultimately the men in the audience, she's not their spiritual authority usurping that authority. And now their spiritual covering where they have to answer to her. It's not the case. She's just sharing from her heart. And I think we can be blessed by many, the teaching of many women. Um, so I would encourage people to not avoid, I would avoid the word co-pastor. I would avoid, you can elevate the wife to the highest level and the most respect, uh, at your church and do everything she currently does. Um, but avoiding these words that are very confusing. And actually you're giving a person a, a term where they actually don't meet the biblical qualifications of it. So in a sense, it's confusion out of order. Um, I, I know why people do it, but I think we really have to rethink that. And it's not out of male dumb. And here's another test. What does the wife say about that? If they're like, no way, this is my title. Okay, well, they don't want to submit to uh, possibly correcting the title. There you go. Wrong motives, wrong heart. Uh, same thing with the man, though, too. Uh, when they want to be called apostle, prophet, pastor, this and that. I wish I could just be called Shane. I'd tell me, Shane, Shane, no, no, you're pastor. Okay, but, you know, it, it, titles aren't anything. It, titles are nothing. Titles are often man-made, man-given, or they're uh, to identify who a person is, but it's not who they are. And so taking something like that away from anyone would really reveal the heart. But then at the same time, there's churches that are very conservative, legalistic, mean-spirited. Um, you know, the women just obviously, they always have to wear a head covering. And I can teach on that later. Uh, that was an uh, um, interesting topic. Head covering, in submission, don't talk, don't pray, keep quiet. I mean, that is thoroughly not biblical. Thank God for praying moms. Mom, women can bring down heaven. And so... But again, it's this legalistic, rigid crowd. But then you have the very lukewarm, um, ah, it doesn't really matter crowd. You know, and that's not healthy either. So anyway, guys, look up the definition of a pastor before you give somebody a term. And what does God say about that? So again, you can be out of order and God's still moving, but it doesn't mean that God doesn't want you to get things in order even more so for more clarification and even maybe experience a more profound and powerful work of God's spirit. Um, and again, there are women uh, pastors. Uh, I can think of some uh, right now in Africa um, and God's blessing the work tremendously. The gifts of the Holy Spirit are there. And, you know, again, it might not be in order, God's perfect design, but God can still work through that area of brokenness. And the woman knows there's just no men who are going to do this. And God will raise up possibly that woman for a season. Uh, and again, so there's not... there. there 
there's not exceptions to the rule that make it okay, but God works in our brokenness, in our fallen nature, and in our, uh, he understands our heart. But if there's a woman pastor, uh, especially here in America, that's, that has men underneath her, I think that's, the, that's just this really out of order. So anyway, I hope that helps on this podcast of Idleman Unplugged. Make sure to subscribe to these and you can get more of these uh, as I release them. Thank you.